I have been really loving the blunderbuss lately. It feels like a solid weapon. So in this video, I want to share my love for the blunderbuss a bit and go over how I use this weapon as well as share my build. First, I'll go over some gameplay explaining my playstyle, then break down the pros and cons of my build and then finally I'll talk about my gear and skill tree. Jumping into some gameplay first, usually what you want to do with the blunderbuss is try to get some type of CC so that you can set up your splitting grenades and sharp no blasts, but it won't always go to plan, but you can always improvise. So what I like to do against people is usually I like to ice shower, then into splitting grenades, and then into sharp no blast. But if that doesn't work, then I'll just double pop splitting grenades on my feet, so that they run to me, and then they'll take a lot of damage. In this fight, it was a pretty hard fight. We all know that great sword and hatchet is pretty much the most damaged weapons in PvP right now. And this guy always camps the fort, the first light fort, and you all we always have to duel him. So we met him here again, just trying to do my dailies, but of course he challenges me and we try to take him out with the blunderbuss. Usually the blunt this heavy blunderbuss setup can win against great swords every day and all day. I actually killed this guy twice. This is just one of those occasions since otherwise the video would be too long. As you can see, I double pop my nades there. He runs into it, still taking fire damage. And then eventually we'll just finish him off with a nice, basically, blast. But yeah, you can see Hatch is pretty strong as well. He almost got me. I just decided to entomb, cleanse everything off me, and then finish him. And there we go. Next, I'm going to show you some war scenarios. So in wars, you usually want to have your ice shower up. You are the guardian of the gate. Since I am heavy, I am in charge of main gate, basically B gate. All I want to do is basically get my ice shower back. As soon as I have it back and I see the enemies advancing through the door, I want to put it down, switch to my blunderbuss, and then split in grenades into them and sharp no blast so that I can do as much damage as possible. And then I want to switch back to my ice gauntlet. I also have a little ice pile on there just to generate ultimate. Usually I don't take shower since there might be other players that have a stronger shower than me or storm. So I usually don't take anything like that. I just use my pylon to generate ultimate and maybe give me some cooldowns while I ice shower. Now let's go over the pros and cons of this build. The pros of this build, the blunderbuss has a lot of burst. It also provides you with a lot of fortify. It has a bit of range, so you can pepper people with blunderbuss auto attacks as you wait for setup. You can also go either strength or int, so finding gear is a breeze since it's usually pretty cheap. People sell heavy gear pieces for quite cheap on the market, so look out for them. And then this build is also really really strong in a 1v1 scenario. Whenever you get a healer, you also become a raid boss. Since you get so much fortify from generating it with your blunderbuss and fortifying second ground plus theirs will give you fortify cap almost instantly so you'll never go down. And this build also hits like a tank but you can also tank things like a tank. The cons of this build unfortunately is the build is very slow. Your cooldowns are quite important. You're definitely not the playmaker, you're always waiting or some CC so that you can follow up with splitting grenades and then I shower to do more damage with sharp no blast. I do struggle to 1vx people in this build because I don't have mobility. Mobility is very important to 1vx people but sometimes you can do it if you can maneuver your way around a pillar or something for a quick heal and then you can just I shower and burst people but very difficult to do with this. Since you're a heavy, you're basically there to just soak up damage and give other people the opportunity to make the plays, but you do have damage. And then next up, 
the last con is you, you basically require a lot of CC to set up big damage. But once you have it, you can definitely burst people to about 20% health if they're medium and you can kill them if they're light in most cases. Now that you know the pros and cons, let's move over to the build so that I can show you how to build this. For my build, I like to run 160 constitution. If I eat a food, it will go up to 200, which will give me extra resistances. But usually for an arena, I'll just eat a strength food. It will take me to 200 strength or just a little bit above it, where I will get extra damage on opponents that are slowed or stunned. Great for when you CC or shower somebody. So you will get that extra little bit of burst, just 10% extra little bit of damage, really good. But when in a war, I am point group. So this means I'm heavy. I like to take the extra extra resistances since I have a guaranteed healer and they can keep me alive. The more tanky I am, the more I will survive. And then mandatory 150 intelligence. This is mandatory because your skills does fire damage and we also have the gem in there. I'll go over it in a minute why I take everything. But it's mandatory to go at least 150 intelligence. The reason why is because you get 15% to elemental damage. So definitely take it. It's worth it. I split up my damage like this. Even though I run Ice Gauntlet, Ice Gauntlet is not my main weapon. It's mainly for utility. But I take it like this since Blunderbuss benefits the most of, out of this attribute setup. So definitely take this. You can just see here is the Blunderbuss. For Masteries, I'll go over it this first and then I'll dive into the gear. For Masteries, I just take Blunderbuss like this. Since I have 5 Refreshing Ward, I do not take Double Down. I don't take this because I already have a Refreshing Ward. Sure, it's good. Some people love this ability, but I do auto attack a lot with the Blunderbuss. And I really like these 4 to 5 passives that I get. So really good for me and I do like the ramp and deep load. So definitely worth it for me. I also take net shot so that I can have an escape plus Azov Sharpnel Blast is a must and splitting grenades also a must. So really, really good. I do like the ultimate after a, an ability. I'll gain eight pallets instead of six. It does really add up. To your damage so whenever you do an ability just auto attack afterwards just keep that in mind whenever you do anything for my ice gauntlet i'm still working on it i have this at the moment i think it's the best for right now but i don't really care much about it i just took ice pylon just to have as a distraction and generate ultimate for me in tomb to cleanse any debuffs and of course ice shower to set up i know a lot of people like to heavy freeze people with ice storm but i do not like ice storm since if i switch off my blunderbuss i lose my fortify and my in power so i usually just start with ice pylon and then switch to my blunderbuss and start peppering the guy with damage so i get all the fortify and the empower so this is why I don't use Ice Storm. It doesn't do that damage that much damage anyway. So I might as well not take it. Just have something out on the field that will generate me ultimate and distract enemies. Sometimes they even go for Ice Boil on while I am killing them it in the back. So sometimes they're a bit uh, not not too smart. I wanted to say stupid, but it's probably not. It's sometimes it's worth it to go for Ice Boil on if you're full int. But yeah. This ice spoil on as a distraction and to generate ultimate that is all utility. Now let's go into the gear and my choices. First thing, let's go over my blunderbuss. I crafted this the other day and it's based in slot for blunderbuss. Flame attunement, because blunderbuss does flame damage or fire damage with its abilities, you want flame attunement because of your rune glass. I'll go over it in a minute. But I do put in an gem that converts my damage to 40% fire damage same reason 
just because blunder bust does a lot of fire damage and i have a lot of things that will boost my fire damage enchanted amazing for blunder bust all of those little pellets that you shoot will get benefit well, well basically will benefit from enchanted so really good kenny empowered we, we basically crit a lot with the blunderbuss so you'll always have this empower buff up and running for the ice gauntlet this one is just one that you can go farm it has deadly frost so that i can get my ice shower back quickly and then refreshing move is a must since you can basically just auto attack people while you are doing war to get your ice shower back quickly as you can see this one is mostly set up for war so that i can get my ice shower back really really good if i could i would change that last luck perk into refreshing so that i can get my ice shower back a bit more quickly i know a lot of people sometimes run healing too on your ice gauntlet but if you can live without it deadly frost is pretty pretty good now for my build for my helmet i do not have a resilient on this yet since i want to switch up a couple of things but for now it's pretty good so in this build i have three freedom five refreshing board and three shirking fortification so this is the helmet that i'm rocking at the moment I also have a rune glass gem in it, an opal, which will give me 2% elemental damage absorption and your fire attacks do an additional 2% do an additional damage. Really, really good for the blunderbuss since it does a lot of fire damage. Next up, my chase piece does have resilient this time. I do want 5 resilient, but I only have 4 at the moment. My chase piece has freedom, refreshing board, resilient. I got this from an OPR uh, box. My gloves, I basically picked this up for 20,000 gold, which was crazy, but still really, really good. Refreshing ward, checking fortification, resilient. I'll probably never replace this for my pants. Same thing. Also picked it up on the trading post for about 20 to 50,000 gold. This build is really cheap to make. And then for this, also free them refreshing board if i were to were to switch out things for maybe splitting grenades and net shot the ability then i'll probably replace my freedom i don't feel like freedom does me anything that much since you can dodge things and usually when they auto attack you or anything you go out of the stun so i might replace my freedom pieces for splitting grenades plague splitting grenades since i do feel like i would get more value out of plague splitting grenades than freedom but i definitely wouldn't give up my refreshing ward since it feels so useful especially on a blunderbuss since you need your cooldowns your abilities does so much damage for you so i'll probably replace the freedom at some point with exhaustive net shot and then i'll probably work in another shirking fortification somewhere if i can but I will definitely get rid of the freedom if I need to get rid of something. Although some people do prefer freedom. For my trinkets, my jewelry, I just got this from the new Starstone Barrows mutation. One, I think this is decent. This, this is not best in slot for most people. But Divine Health Slash Protection is pretty best in slot to me. If I need to go hunt for an amulet with stamina recovery on it is going to cost me a lot. So I'm pretty content with just this. And moving on, you can see I have my best in slot ring. This is best in slot for heavy blunderbuss. Basically the ring has fire damage, invigorated punishment. So we do more damage when somebody has a buff on them, 2% more. It stacks up to 8 times, so 16% dam extra damage if we have it. And of course, hearty. Now let's move on to my earring. My earring has refreshing toast purifying toast and regenerating i really enjoy regenerating sure you can get a refreshing word on it but regenerating is really helpful in a 1v1 sometimes you can even see your health regenerate on your bar as you fight especially if opponents like to kite kite you and constantly run away because you're heavy you can't catch them at least you're gonna get some health back 
each time they're not, every time they're not hitting you, you're getting some health back. Plus you've got the food running. It's definitely worth it if you have a lot of health. And for my uh, basically ultimate, I have stone, stone form. And this stone form will give me extra fortify and basically like a little sacred under my feet if I activate it. So mending stone form heal for 75% hard rune damage. Really, really good. It's basically like a little extra sacred under you for a couple of seconds. It basically can regenerate by rate about half a bar, maybe a little bit more. Really good. For consumables, this is just my regular open world consumables. But I usually run some powerful oak flares and then I already use my honing stone but I usually use that in arenas I'll either pop a uh, strength food a uh, 40 strength food or a roasted uh, corn food here depending on what I need and of course your cranberry thing for stamina in arenas if you want to work your way towards best in slot gear then you can watch this video where i explain how i generate money and make my way towards best in slot gear 